Hi there, Russ Douglas 232 again. This is just a little explanatory uh, forward for the video we're just about to watch. Um, and uh, regarding the PARD 007 and the trial, the test Bruce and I did using it on five very different day scopes. Um, I'll put the, the specs of the scopes underneath in the description and uh, I'll add them probably also on the screen for each scope as they come up. A few things, one is that um, wherever possible, I'll leave the sound that we recorded with the PAR 007, I'll leave the sound intact, unless in any cases it's a little bit muffled, because it's, it's not mega clear, um, uh, but wherever we've, we've done a commentary as we're going along, I'll leave it on the, on the, uh, on the video. My PAR 007 I bought from Optics Warehouse, Thanks, Sean and the guys uh, and ladies. It's available with a 12mm lens or a 16mm lens. The 16mm lens pad 007 has an onboard, like a built-in inherent zoom of times 1.75. So be aware, if you go for the 16mm lens version, you don't want, really want to use it on a scope that's sort of like, let's say 10 to 20 mag, because on the scope's lowest mag of 10, um, you're actually going to be looking at 17.5 mag once you once you factor in the, the pads inherent onboard mag. So uh, and also in general with either of the two pads, uh, the 007s, the 12 mil or the 16 mil, um, anytime you go up in magnification, you're going to narrow down the field of view. But you'll see that from uh, some of the, uh, the scopes we tried it on. One other thing, um, my onboard OCD. Welcome to my world. The PAD 008, 008 LRF and the 007 have a near eye display. So you're basically looking at a, a fairly high res screen. I think it's 800 by 600. Um, uh, it's this four to three ratio. Um, but both PADs, or all three PADs, 007, 008, 008 LRF, record in 1920 by 1080. A uh, full HD, but it's stretched ever so slightly. It's 16 to nine ratio. So if you look, scopes always have crosshairs equal height with width. But when you look at a lot of videos online, it'll, you'll see the horizontal crosshair is stretched because the pads got a slight fault in it, in my, in, in my opinion, in that the, um, the recorded um, imagery doesn't quite match what the shooter sees with, with through their eyepiece. Um, so as I'm going to do with all my haunting footage that's coming up in a hopefully in not too distant future, um, I've pre-processed all of these video clips recorded uh, in Bruce's garage or from Bruce's garage. I've pre-processed them, shrinking them slightly from 1920 by 1080 to 1440 by 1080. So circles are circles again. The horizontal and vertical stadia of the scopes are equal sized. Basically, it's now correct. Um, so uh, my, my OCD is, is, is satisfied. I'm afraid I chose to do this. This has more on my idea, and many, many thanks to Bruce for his patience in doing this. Um, I couldn't get to his, his, his house early enough on this particular day, so we did the, the um, first part of the test, the optical zoom and digital zoom. We did it in his garage as far back as we could, but most of the scopes couldn't quite get focus on the garage door. So the, 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 the idea really there is, I'm afraid it's a little bit lacking, but um, the daylight footage, um, the, uh, well, the overhead lighting daylight footage, um, the objective, the target, it's the tape measure on the back of his garage door. It's, it's not going to be in focus, I'm afraid, with most of these scopes. Um, but the idea is to show you the, the tunnel vision, the FOV effect as you increase the zoom, um, and to show you both the effect of optical zoom on the, the pad footage and the pad's in onboard digital zoom, which goes up in 0.5 increments, so from 1 to 3.5. Um, so, and then halfway through, we then opened the garage door. We'd gone up through five scopes. Then we opened the garage door, focused on his distant roof, neighbor's distant roof tile, the ventilation tile, uh, 100 yards away, and we did his usual sort of footage test, looking at that, aiming roughly at the ventilation tile, and we did the same test, increasing through the optical zoom and the digital zoom, and then we went back down through the 54321 through the five scopes. We added um, a VCSEL laser illuminator, 
because basically our VCSEL is the most efficient, modern, latest tech kind of uh, IR illuminator. So we added one of those. I think it's the precisionnightvision.com one we used, which is only 35 quid. Fantastic. If you've seen some of our other videos, fantastic 150, 200 meter illumination from a 35 quid IR torch. Pretty good. Thanks, George. Um, so we use that with all five scopes, focusing on the distant um, target. You'll hopefully see a bit of a comparison because the scopes have got different eye bell, different uh, magnifications, different tubes. There's one first focal plane scope, which should hopefully be a little bit interesting um, amongst them all. Um, so hope you enjoy. Recording on the PAR 007 using the Discovery 3 to 18 by 50 FFP scope. We're a bit puzzled as to why we're using the PNV multi bell adapter, and we're a little bit puzzled why, on several scopes so far, the PNV, oh sorry, the, the PAR has been low, it's been angled down at the rear, so a little bit low, so the, the reticle's not centered on the screen. Anyway, we're on minimum mag on the discovery scope, so, and this is one drawback of first focal plane scopes that Bruce and I have just been discussing, is it's difficult with the PAR 007 to focus precisely on the reticle, because the reticle changes in size. So what we've done, what Bruce has done is, we're on no mag at the moment, no optical, sorry, no digital mag. If I zoom, so 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, yeah. Now, obviously, the reticle is slightly out of focus. And the image is one wandering about because it's not tightened up, but... Um, the reticle is not usable. You can see the reticle. Yeah, you can. With, that's one thing with the Discovery. I've already written articles about this for Egon World, this scope. And I like this first focal plane scope, the Discovery, because the reticle is optimised to be crystal clear and very fine on full mag. But when you get down to low mag, it's very, very fine indeed, as you can see here. Very fine. In daylight, on a complex background, you're not going to see that reticle. Um, but scope has been geared for the uh, reticle to be very usable at mid to high mag, which is why I bought it, the rim fires. Anyway, so that's going up and down through the zoom, the digital zoom on the part. Just start recording. Yeah, I've, I've just restarted the recording, and right, we're back in the centre, so if I hold that roughly there. You're right, you might need to start increasing the muscle. Yep, so Bruce is going to increase roughly what we're on now. Now we're on 8 at the moment. That's 8 mag, and the scopes, the reticle's getting very nicely usable. That's oh, ten, that's 10. That's 10, and the reticle's now focused perfectly for me. 12. Yep. 14. Yep. 16. And full mag. Full mag, so that's 18 mag. 
And is the reticle still in focus? The reticle for me is crystal clear focus. All the way up. All the way up. That's good. But um, but that was uh, when the target is just obliterated because obviously the, the, the we've not focused the objective at this distance. But what you've just seen anyway is, that is a result of zooming the first focal plane discovery scope. Do you want to zoom it out now, Bruce, slowly, please? Okay. That's uh, all right. 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, yeah, getting a little bit fuzzy now. 5, 4, 3, that's minimum. Okay, and there's, there's the tip measure I was focusing to start with. It would be interesting to use the run the far bit maximum digital magnification and then run up to the, the optical magnification just to see what it looks like. Okay. So I think it's about three and a half maximum. That's all three and a half now. Right, I'll do it. Okay, just yep. to see what it looks like. So it's four, five, six, yeah. eight, ten, twelve, 15, 16, maximum. Right, that's still pretty clear. And we are, <coughs> we are well zoomed in here on the, the reticle, the center of the reticle. I can only see the number two range. I wouldn't even actually look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Gone. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> yes, you may have probably find the target with that amount of magnification in. Yes, that is <laughs> some mag. Um, well, that's what I think. If, if you were on a bipod with a 178 HMR, but looking to hedge, hedge you'd the be, bunny 100 yards away, you'd be you'd be choosing which bit of the eyeball you went to. Be yeah. Um, with that amount, with that amount of magnification. Yeah. So if you want to, you want to go back down through the yeah. there, please. You got it. Yeah. Okay, I'll just pick it back. Eight. Four. Okay, and we'll put it back on the centre and this is the MTC Viper X Connect 3 to 12 by 32 uh, clamped onto Brucey bonus rail. Brucey's commenting that the focus seems to be slightly sharper away to the side away from the center of the reticle so yeah 200 right and left i can read the, the red numbers but in, in the middle you can't in the middle i can't if we do the same test then <coughs> if i hold this as still as i can and bruce if you wind the mag up i can't see numbers this time unfortunately so we're going everything's going blurry and it's getting bigger Much. So if you then zoom back out, please. Again, this is the PNV scope bell adapter we're using, just for speed. So minimum. Okay. The reticle itself isn't perfectly in focus, but um, the difficulty is there's so little um, eye bell on this scope to attach the, the part adapter to that when you're adjusting the position of the whole part 007 you're naturally changing the diopter measurement and changing the focus of the uh, reticle um, okay so the other test is uh, try and hold this still did you zoom, did you zoom? 1.5 2 2.5 3 we're really off the, almost off the bottom of the screen here now 3.5 the crosshair is just within the screen at the bottom that's how off-centre we are. Mm. Um, right. Do you want to change the optical? No, if you have a look through that, Bruce. Just put a look through the knee. Oh, gee, for his eye. Hmm. <coughs> Let's zoom out. 3, 2.5, 2, 
1.5 1 uh, so we have a minimum optical zoom, minimum digi zoom so we'll still with the Eagle Vision Cam adapter no that's it moved so that's it that's so everything on the screen looks <coughs> centered now um, we're on the maximum 3.5 digital mag on the PAR 007 which by the way was bought from Optics Warehouse thanks guys um, uh, but yeah we've noticed a lot of play in the, yeah. again in this one with the, if we move this down you can now see we're, we're losing most of the vertical yeah. and if I move it back up again we can centre it yeah, it's, it's even gone beyond the centre yeah. now, it's slightly above. Can, now, now it's centred. I can also go a bit to the right and a bit to the left. And that movement is all with the, the, the adapter tight. Is it very tight? That's a bit as tight as I can get it. Right. And, and now slightly low, so. so you need to Oh, but slightly low, but I've now centered it. So that's centered. So you can put this, you can tighten with the Eagle Vision Cam adapter. You can tighten it rock solid. And then there's a, a, a malleable amount of movement um, such that you can actually center it wherever you like. And it's going to stay there, isn't it? I mean, well, it's good. It's good. Well, well, it's going to stay there if you don't move it, you don't knock it, yeah. Yeah, it's going to stay there. I mean, if you shouldered a rifle and went for a walk, it would move. I think you would be, I think, yeah. And then you would, when you got where, when you got wherever you were going you'd and got... jiggling it to get it back to where you wanted. Yeah, you'd have to re-centre it. Um, but it's actually solidly attached at the same time. Mm -hmm. so oh, it's it's, like, off, it's almost like it's a ball joint. It's essentially is a ball joint. It's right. the, way that, the way that thing is made on the inside, it is like a ball joint. Okay, so that's actually a plus. The fact that it's this uh, tight ball joint uh, well, could maybe. be a plus. I, I would, I, well, it's not rock solid. I, I would still prefer something that clamped onto there and just didn't move. Yeah. So that I know when I put the part on, it's going to go lined up. Yes. And I would never think of it. Yeah. Whereas this one, by that there, I, I, every time I pick the rifle up and put it to my eye, I'd be probably looking to make some sort of minor adjustment. Either that or you need. Either that you would simply get used to it because, of course, it's not changing your zero. No, that's right. Because you're just looking at the reticle. You yeah. stop at the reticle as long as, your scope, as long as your scope's clamped that's tightly right. in the mounts, then it's yeah. not spinning the zero. So we're now recording. Um, so this is the Hawk scope, 3 to 12 by 50, okay. the Hawk Vantage. Um, 25mm tube, adjustable objective, not side wheel focus. Uh, it's actually mounted on a rifle right now in a set of uh, tripod quad sticks type things, which I've taken photos of. There's no bolt, no magazine, ammunition's like 20 miles away, so it's all quite safe. Uh, so we're going to do a zoom. Right, that's, my, that's minimum zoom there. Okay, we're at certain minimum of zoom. That's it, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and finally twelve. Okay, and then back. Twelve, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, and this is very steady because obviously it's you know, the scope is on a rifle on sticks rather than being just on a metal plate or by fingertips. But I have to say that the little four black triangles, top, bottom, left and right, four corners are nice and vir virtually even, so the reticle is very nicely centered on the screen. And oh, next test is the digi zoom. <coughs> so, second focal plane, of course. So, 1.5, 2. 2.5, 3. There is sometimes a lag when it jumps from one mag to the next before the, 
the, the actual text changes. Mm -hmm. So we're on three, three point five. Now, if you go to the window in three point, that's how I set it up. That's how I set the, the ah yeah the, the clamp up the centering. I yes, I centered the reticle using three point five. That's, Digital that's zoom, a good tip, and counting the dots up and doing side to side to get it with middle for diddle as I So, think. using the Eagle Vision Cam scope adapter, work the Digimag on the Par 007 up to full mag, do your centering, do the pivoting of the, of the um And then try to finally lock off. And then nip it up if you can. If you can lock it off then you're, you're going to be good. Yep. Um, and so then you can back off, you can back off the digital zoom and, and then then you're going to be able to have a centre vertical. Three. 2.5, 2, 1.5, and 1. And now you're, that's why you're now seeing four little corners. Yep. Because the reticle is pretty much bang in the middle of the canvas field of view. Good technique. Cool. Excellent. I, I, I wish you'd thought of that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, it's a tip we can give people following this video, uh, following this review. Um, don't know how I'm going to get this, bust all this into lesson like an hour's <laughs> edit, but we'll see. Okay, so we've now got the last of the five scopes we're reviewing or we're comparing here. Second focal plane is the PAO um, 6 to 24 by 56, side wheel focus, 30 mil tube, um, and we've got the PARD 007 attached with the precisionnightvision.com uh, adapter because we found that there's only 14 mil of purchase. At the aft end of the eye bell, after your illumination dial for the illuminated reticle, which is red green on this scope, so we found the PrecisionNightVision.com adapter is better than the Eagle Vision Cam one on this particular scope. Um, right, so we're centered. Obviously, it's out of focus because the, the door is only six meters away, and this is a high mag scope, so we're parallax down as close as we can get. But if Bruce zooms in, thank you, Bruce. Then. And this is basically just showing you the field of vision. 14, 16, 20, yeah, unfortunately, 24. unfortunately, because of the high mag of this scope, it doesn't parallax down anywhere near as cl far as close as the other scopes. So the last few that mag mags uh, were was just all the same blur. Mm -hmm. Do you want to zoom it back out again, please? Thank you. Um, Obviously, I'm hoping all my words are being recorded by the part of the voice there. Right, so that's it. That's it zoomed out. Yeah. And we'll now do the digi zoom. So 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. Um, let's go. Well, then it's, it's not all, bad. It's all, it's all, yeah, it's not bad at all. It's only on this. 3.5 mag that you can see that it's not centered vertically um, and not quite horizontally but it's not bad at all uh, so zoom back out again uh, 2 mag 2.5 to 2 1.5 1 mag so back to where we started and that's us and then we're going to do the outdoor tests in darkness excuse the helicopter going over uh, a bit of noisy we're going to work through the scopes in reverse order So this is work, us working in reverse order. Scope five, which is the PAO 6 to 24 by 50, uh, side wheel focus, 30 mil tube, second focal plane. This is us focusing on Bruce's uh, usual benchmark, the square ridge tile, just slightly to the left and below the cross the reticle, the crosshairs. Um, this is on, was on minimum mag, and we're using the pads 007 onboard IR. Just wasn't enough. Wasn't good enough. Uh, in these circumstances we're in here. Uh, so we've added the PNV, PrecisionNightVision.com, we've added the 35 mil, v sorry, 35 quid VCSEL laser um, and we've got that tightly focused as it goes. Actually, just, if I just for the first time, if I just... Uh, is it, it's over there. If I just... That's what wide in the back and you can see it illuminates the... Uh, the bush. Ah, all right. Now, now it's focused on the 
Uh, now I've eliminated the ridge line a little bit. Uh, let me just get this back and focus that better. Focus the scope around it. Okay, now I'll focus the scope on the the lichen on the, the ridge line tiles. So I know the air brick, but okay Bruce, so do you want to do the optical zoom now please? Okay. Yeah. I'll try and focus. Air brick is there. So, Bruce is going up slowly from six to twenty-four. Tell me when you're up there. Just a bit. Okay. okay, so we're on 24 mag, full mag on this scope. I'm going to try and refine the focus a little bit. Best focus is about there. If I hold that still, Bruce, you, you, I think my mind's playing tricks on me whether these. Because you know what's there. Yeah, I know that there's a little grillage, a matrix of holes in that ridge tile. I don't think I can see them, but if I move my head, do you want to have a look, see if you can see it? Yeah, that's what I was getting. I could, I, because I know what's there, mm. I could kind of, my brain was making up little black blobs <laughs> where, the, where, the, yeah. where, the, where the holes in the air are. Yeah. You, you kinda, it's nothing like as clear as it is during the day or with, for example, the, the MG08. No. At the end of the way, you can see the holes clearly. You can individually see the holes. Right. Quite, quite sharp. Quite, quite well defined. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out slowly. I'm not going to bother with the digital digi zoom in out. No, because that's not going to help the picture. No. But we're going to zoom out slowly. So Bruce is zooming out the scope, and then we're going to repeat this trial on the other, the other scopes with the same precision light vision dot com illuminator. Focused as well as we can get it. That's so back. that's us back, and the ridge line roof tile is in the crosshair there. So if I lift it up slightly, you see the ridge line tile and the trees beyond. This is working back. This is now scope four. Uh, this is the Hawk Vantage 3 to 12 by 50, um, adjustable objective. Now, something that just before we get onto the little zoom test and record that, something we've just done is Bruce has just adjusted. He had to do it because I, I couldn't really see it from the way I'm standing. But Bruce has just adju adjusted the objective focus down to 20 meters. 20 yards. Sorry, 20 is it yards, is it? Yeah. On this scope. Uh, and that's the ridge line just come into fairly good focus. And that's 100 yards away. That's 100 yards away. And the reason for that is that IR light focuses at a different distance to visible light. And this is, <laughs> this is a, a cast iron uh, proof of that. Right. So a little demonstration. So um, anyway, so we're recording and I can see the ridge tile just above and to the left of the reticle. Let's just if we go slightly, this one to slightly to the side and slightly. Oh, there, there we go, there's a ridge tile just above the cross there. So if you want to zoom, Bruce, and we, again we're using the precisionlightvision.com VCSEL laser for illumination. So Bruce is slowly zooming in from 3 to 12 mag. Ah, now that the, the uh, ridge tile is going out of focus now. You want right. to try and bring it back into Yeah, do you want to try and... Okay, I'll try to do this with it getting my hands in front of the room. <laughs> Very difficult. Right. One hand, I'll tell you what, I'll go one hand on each side, yeah? I'm going to go to 30, to see if it's better or worse. 30 is getting better. Okay. I'll go to 60. Oh, no, that's, that's gone worse again. So, back. so we'll retrain somewhere, somewhere over there. Uh, no, back a bit, bit further. Back a bit further. That, that's me back on 30. Try going a little bit the other way from 30. No, no. It's, I think it's just above 30 maybe. So. Oh, hold on, sorry. I, 
the ridge tile is there to the right. Okay, so I was focusing on the slate to the left of the ridge tile. Um, so that's us on full mag, 100 yards, with the precisionlightvision.com VCSEL IR torch. Um, recorded through the PAR 007. Um, and we're back using the Eagle Vision Cam adapter um, for the PAR 007. And I'm going to have to take stills of these images in the video and compare them. It's weird that the tile block in brick or whatever, the ridge tile, ridge vent tile rather, looks a little bit clearer here, but I can't see the sort of uh, can I can't I see the matrix of the pattern? Yeah, it's, it's as good as we're going to get anyway, I think. Oh, and the other thing was we couldn't put a coaster on the objective lens, uh, objective focus ring, because this scope is so low, close, so close to the barrel, there's not enough room for it to get a scope. So it gets coaster around the scope ring. Uh, yeah, okay, Bruce, if you want to zoom back, I think we're going to have a, a reasonably good. We're not going to get the focus any better than that. Okay. I'm going to go back to 20 yards. I'm going to focus. That should be a view of the Yes, I believe that is. Yeah. Okay, working backwards, this is now the. NTC Viper X Connect 3 to 12 by 32 um, again with the add-on PNV VCSEO laser illuminator and uh, Bruce seconds ago just commented this is not really the scope you would ever want to put a uh, add-on night vision onto um, it has just enough uh, collar just enough tube at the back of the uh, eye bell for the um, Eagle Vision Cam adapter to nip onto, um, but we focused the IR as best we can. And sorry for the movement. And put the uh, the, um, the vent tile is about there. And so I built it. Should I leave the focus alone or try, try and improve it, or for me, you, you, or...? You can try, you can try, just that I don't... Oh yes, that's nicer. That's better for me. Well, this is on, so we're on minimum mag. Yeah. We're on three times mag. So Bruce, if you could zoom us, please. So we can three up to twelve. Using it. And then it's going slightly out of focus, so I'll sharpen the focus again. So you've got to mark it. Yeah. So that's maximum mag. That's maximum mag. And reaching forward. Ah, now. About as good as I'm getting. Remember that, well, you know, in, earlier on in daylight, Bruce, at the back of the door, mm -hmm. you said there was a slight blurriness in the centre of the eyepiece. Mm -hmm. And it was slightly, the focus was slightly better off to the side. Mm -hmm. You still seeing that? It, yeah, it is like that, actually. I can see, this time, I can see we're only on 12 mag, and it's only a 32mm objective lens, which is the main reason Bruce was commenting you wouldn't, you know, we use add on IR with this. Just, just not, compared to the Hawk. Yeah, compared to 12, it's not giving a good image because the Hawk's letting a lot more light in. Yeah, well, the Hawk's 3 to 12 is, is by 50, okay. and this is 32, so I can see where the tile is, but there's not a hope in hell of seeing the uh, matrix of the, the pattern of the events. And I do think the focus is slightly better left and right of centre. Okay, so if we, if we can zoom back out, please, Bruce.
So that was back out. So working back, this is scope two. It's the Discovery uh, three to eighteen by fifty first focal plane scope. This is a minimum mag, which is why you can hardly see the reticle at all. Um, but I am pointing at the middle of the air brick, and it is focused. It's pretty well focused, Bruce. Thank you. Um, so do you want to, Bruce? Do you want to do the zoom? I'm bring the zoom up. Bruce is going to slowly increase the optical mag. Right, we're going that way this time. We've got the same VCSEL laser from Laser Torch Air Illuminator from PrecisionNetVision.com on top, like we have with the other scopes. But the wobbles are because this scope and the one before okay. it and the next one. <sighs> yeah, the wobbles are because the scope is on Bruce's Bruce's bonus. Pick it in it. The vertical itself is still pretty crisp. Again, I'm not going to see the, the vents. No, but the matrix and the vents. I, th I think it's a, it's still clearer than any any of the other sports we've, we've used. It, it's. Um, my impression of the events are, are better than that than they are than anywhere else. Again, we're up at the 18 magnification here, and it's a, and the glass is not actually it's not a bad scope glass wise. It's, it's doing not a bad job. Yeah. So one other thing we just mentioned, by which I'll mention here, is we were just discussing, and with IR, with night vision, with HD night vision, I mean the sensor on this pad 007 is an HD sensor. Definitely, you need VCSEL IR torch for illumination, and you need a bigger, as big an obje objective lens as you can on the scope, the day scope you mounted on, to mm -hmm. get as much IR light in as possible. And I'm hoping this isn't going to be shaking all over the place, but it probably was just through my eyes touching the eyepiece. Um, so. Okay, Bruce, if you could back off the zoom, please. And as he backs off the zoom, we're getting some light from above, which is basically the IR light reflecting off the underside of the raised garage door. And there we have it backed off. Right, so this is the last one, which was the first one we did in daylight. This is the Cytron S Track. Was it 1.75 to... No, it's the S-TAC. Sorry, S-TAC. S-TAC 2.5 to 17.5 by 56. Right. Um, so, we zoomed way out to 2.5 right now. We can see an awful lot of the garage door um, above, the, above us. Um, so if you can get the recording. We've got the same PNV VCSEL torch illuminating the ridge line in distance. You want me to start marking up? Yep. So Bruce, I'm going to start zooming. I'll try and keep the cross there on the ridge line vent tile. Set maximum mag. And focus is on the left. Yep, up here, that's fine. Oh, that's a nice slow jump. That's an easy focus that one. That's been the easiest one of them all to focus. The focus dial is not stiff at all. My impression is it's marginally better than the Discovery. Not a huge amount, marginally better. I, I, I feel like I can see the, the, the holes in the air, but just... Yeah. I've got... There's not much in it. No, it's not much, but this is, yeah, I can just about see dark spots where the holes are in the vent brick. Mm -hmm. um, 
But this scope is twice new was twice the value of that discovery. Yeah. This was eight hundred. The discovery new was three nine uh, three nine nine, and it's now three. I noticed the other day it's now three four nine. Um, so we're on maximum mag seventeen point five mag. Uh, recording ridge line at a hundred yards. And so Bruce, if you can if you can come back down to the mag, please. And obviously, because we've got a low mag here, low base mag, you can see a lot of the IR illumination bouncing back off the uh, garage door above. Hi everyone, just to finish off, um, a few things, one or two things just occurred to me of as I was doing the fi final edit um, on this uh, video. Um, thanks for watching, first of all. When you're actually using the PAR 007, um, it's up to you with your scope adapter and PAR combination to balance the tunnel vision effect of the distance of the pad from your um, eyepiece um, against the, um, the zoom factor and also the digital zoom factor to get an image you're happy with. The reason I pre-processed the pad footage, make it narrower, was to give you the same image you'll have through the pad eyepiece when you're using it. So avoiding the stretch that uh, part have accidentally in included with their software while recording. Um, so um, if you look at any of the images and there's a fair bit of uh, tunnel vision, don't forget when you're using it yourself, it's, up, it's entirely your choice to balance the uh, pix possible pixelation of digital zoom against removing some of the tunnel vision effect. As you'll have noticed, as the clips got on, they got uh, the, the audio seemed to improve, at least what I noticed while I was editing. The Pad 007 is not quite as sealed a unit as the 008, so hence why it picks up the sound of our voices. Um, and one factor with this, and I woke up bizarrely thinking about this this morning at 5 a.m., is there's a little rubble panel on the side of the Pad 007 that opens to reveal the memory card slot and the HDMI out slot. Having this uh, sort of rubber panel that you open to access the memory cards, obviously this is not got as high an IPX rating as the PAD 008, 008 LRF and the PAD SA Thermal Series. But one other factor is as I push the card with a fingernail, the card pops out, but be aware if I hold this square on, the card goes in horizontally. Um, there is a little bit of a gap above and below the memory card slot. You've got an external plastic fascia to the, the body of the pad, and then there's within it, if I can just take this card out with my fingertips, within it, there's a slightly larger slot. Basically, I put the card in once at an angle like this, and it actually fell inside the body of the pad, and it was rattling around, had no option, so I returned it to Ash at customriflescopes.com and he took the casing apart, um, leaving everything within warranty, of course, uh, which is why I didn't do it myself. He returned the pad and the memory card. Be aware, when you're inserting the micro SD card into the pad, put it horizontally all the way in until it clicks. There we go, faint click, and then seal it up again to keep out the elements. Don't do what I did. Look forward to seeing uh, some of you at the British Shooting Show in uh, 10 days time, hopefully. Feel free to say hello and uh, I'll be saying, have you subscribed? Cheers. Thank, thank you for all the subscribers. Feel free to like and share this, pass the word. All we're doing is passing on our own tip, hints and tips and do's and don'ts to give you the choice to make up your own minds. Thanks very much. I think that's everything. I'm just going to edit out the camera falling over several times.